Well, welcome everybody to another edition of A Last Christian. My name is J.D. Williams, and of course, joining me from New York City is my co-host, my brother in Christ, Mr. David Paxton. And this is going to be one of those uh, episodes, I'm afraid I may have to say this quite often, and that is I am a member of the U.S. Press Association, and so I'm granted uh, rights under the free press that uh, the uh, establishment doesn't like. And it appears now that the establishment doesn't like America. Mm. Uh, I, I have never seen the United States in such bad shape in my entire life. I went through Watergate. We went through that just fine. And I think that was kind of overblown, even though I was on the side that was anti-Nixon. I've changed my mm-hmm. opinions, by the way, over the years. But anyway, um, we have Man, never... Both sides are corrupt, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, we have never acted like a third world kangaroo court country Mm -hmm. until what happened in your city this week mr paxton and that is the persecution of someone the uh yeah well anyway like i said we're going to get into it again i'm a member of the u.s press association if you don't like it i'm sorry but we're just going (laughs) to tell you the truth and if you know there was a thing one time where somebody said you can't handle the truth the united states Mm -hmm. of america can't handle the truth can they david no, they really can't, which is why I moved to the outer galaxy, as you can see. Um, <laughs> you know, it's just crazy. The whole yeah. Earth is is uh, literally going to hell in a handbasket. But that's what we expect, right? We're yeah, like, it is. man, how could this get any worse? And yeah. here you go. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> I have been listening hard. to a lot of the socialists celebrating the fact that they were able to get a conviction on Donald Trump. And my question to any one of them, And anybody that supports their opinion is this. If you went to court, would you want that judge to uh, be your judge? Would you want to not know what you're even charged with until closing arguments and then be told, hey, jurors, you don't have to come to a unanimous agreement. All you have to do is say, okay, I think he's guilty of that. No, I think he's guilty of this, and I think he's guilty of this other thing, and Mm -hmm. that we will consider a unanimous verdict. Are you really happy with that? Because if you are, you're dumber than even you should think you are. Yeah, and it's just crazy if people don't get it. They're like, you know, how here we are. Oh, well, it's just because that's what I want. Right. You know, and, and what happened? Thing. That's the whole so thing. So here you got the, uh, the, the leftist woke mob, right? Mm-hmm. They don't like a verdict. What do they do? They burn down cities and blow things up right. and, then, and then blame you for it. Um, if the right in this point didn't like the verdict. What did they do? Well, they went and raised fifty-four million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, uh, I think honestly, all they did. They're not the same. I'm sorry. If you're a woke, you're an idiot. It's exactly. As as that. I think mm-hmm. that the only thing that this did was guarantee the fact that Donald J. Trump is going to win in a landslide. Mm-hmm. Now, whether or not they actually allow him to take office, that's a whole different thing, and we'll get to that at some future show. I think the show. people are going to get involved this time, too. But uh, anyway. Yeah, and I would also let people know that um, just because, and th- this is really hard for me to say, I, I'm, I'm being very, very careful with my words here. Okay, I have to be, because I don't mm-hmm. want to come across as somebody that's, that's pro-violence. I'm not not pro-violence at all but you can only push people so far before they say enough is enough it's time to handle it so i'll I'll leave it at that now here is exactly i mean it it comes to a point jd i really want to say this it comes to a point where if it doesn't matter what you do you're going to do some other stuff <laughs> right. because you, you know if you're going to yeah. get blamed for it anyway you might as well yeah. do it and this is the mentality yeah that's going to be out there when they keep doing this you know i, I tried to do things righteously and you're treating me like i did them uh unrighteously mm-hmm. well then mm-hmm. you're going to get the unrighteous acts and right. then, you know they, they don't realize the wrath they're bringing down upon themselves it's going to be don't. interesting they are totally mm-hmm. blind to it here is the actual report by the way From Feature Story News in Washington, I'm Benji Heyer with a roundup of the biggest headlines this past week. This is a scam. This is a rigged trial. History. Donald Trump becomes the first former or serving U.S. president to be criminally convicted. On Thursday, he was found guilty of attempting to influence the 2016 election 
by falsifying business records to cover up payments to a porn star in return for her silence about an affair. Mitch McCann was outside the courthouse in New York. It took the Manhattan jury just over 11 hours to find the former president of the United States guilty on the 34 charges he faced. Trump left the courtroom and rallied against the judge and the entire court process, calling it a disgrace and a rigged trial with a corrupt and conflicted judge. Current President Joe Biden condemned Donald Trump's attempt to paint his trial as rigged calling those efforts reckless, dangerous and irresponsible. He says the conviction reaffirms the American principle that no one is above the law. Our justice system has endured for nearly 250 years, and we should never allow anyone to tear it down. That's America. That's who we are. And that's who we'll always be, God willing. The two men are set to face off again at the ballot box in November. Trump, now a felon, can still constitutionally run for the Oval Office, even from behind bars. The judge has set July 11th as the date of sentencing, just days before the Republican Party officially chooses him as its nominee. Donald Trump is expected to appeal the verdict. He faces three other criminal trials, pleading not guilty to all charges. That's because he's not guilty of anything except being Donald (laughs) Trump. You know, that's it. That's all he's guilty of is doing the right thing. And Biden bringing up God, Biden wants babies yeah, killed up until, the, up until <laughs> the, uh, the, the time of birth or even thereafter. You know, he's a mm-hmm. huge supporter of killing babies. And, and then, I guarantee and you God's, God's not for that one. <laughs> he's also a huge uh, backstabber when it comes to uh, the state of Israel. He's turning his back on Israel. Um, and, okay. David, I, I mentioned this uh, to you briefly before we got started. We got hammered here in Texas with some storms that completely just devastated uh, our region here. And uh, in watching the news all week, it looked like that that storm was continuing on to the east, uh, to the northeast, and it was uh, going up the coastline, really, causing havoc, killing people. Well, you know. When you bless Israel, you're blessed. When you curse them, you're cursed. That's how I look at it. And just listen to this. At least 23 people, including children, have now died as extreme weather continues to rip across much of the United States. Hail, tornadoes, high winds and severe thunderstorms have devastated large parts of Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas and Kentucky. Ever since Tony Waterman has more from Austin, Texas. Around 47 million people are at risk of extreme weather on Tuesday, with very large hail, hurricane-force winds, and flash flooding expected. The National Weather Service warned residents in the Dallas-Fort Worth area to take cover on Tuesday morning as wind gusts over 70 miles per hour tore through the region. At least seven people died in the state over the weekend. The extreme conditions come as an early-season heat wave sweeps across the region, setting records from the Lone Star State to Florida. Tony Waterman, Texas. Okay, now that's just, that, that report came out on Tuesday. I saved it, okay? Because I could see at that point that this storm was, was going to be a killer. And it has. It has continued its wrath. But mm. are, are you seeing, um, I call it the act of God curse. Are you seeing this uh, occurring in the United States? And, and put that into context of remember what Biden said that he wants to end the war in Gaza under his terms and all that, and turn his back on it, and, hey, we're going to withhold weapons from you and all that. Do you, do you see that as a ramification of that decision? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, just look back through history. Every single time uh, this has happened, from all, all the major storms that come out. Now, this is, this is a warning. If he continues to do that, then there's going to be a real big one. We're going to remember yeah. it. Uh, not not just in little parts. Sometimes it, mm-hmm. it'll touch and say, "Hey, you know, we we got uh, we got some issues here. Mm-hmm. You need to take care of them." Yeah. But I I can pretty I would I would bet all my money that Biden's not going to listen to God. So no, no. I mean, he brings up the word God, and that's what he calls it—a word. I mean, he doesn't actually, in my opinion, personal opinion here, personal mm-hmm. opinion, Biden is not a Christian. And Biden is setting himself up for a really hot place to spend his eternity. That's my he's, opinion. I would. He's not even a Catholic. No, I don't think so. As a matter of fact, in some Catholic churches, he can't take communion. I know that's a fact. Okay. 
Um, now, here's another one for Sleepy Joe. Listen to this one. President Biden says Israel has offered Hamas a roadmap proposal for a ceasefire in Gaza and the reconstruction of the war-torn Palestinian territory. On Friday, he outlined a three-part plan, as Nick Harper explains. A durable end of the war. That's been the focus, a durable end of this war. U.S. President Joe Biden says mediators in Qatar have presented Israel's comprehensive proposal to Hamas. Phase one, made up of a number of conditions, would take place over six weeks. A full and complete ceasefire. A withdrawal of Israeli forces from all populated areas of Gaza. Release of a number of hostages, including women, Palestinians, civilians would return to their homes. Then phase two, a permanent end to fighting between Israel and Hamas. And three, a major reconstruction plan for Gaza. Biden made a direct plea to Israelis who, he says, want to keep fighting for years, instead urging them to take a step back. It's time for this war to end, for the day after to begin. On Thursday, Hamas told negotiators they are prepared to reach an agreement if Israel stops its assault. While the United States insists it's not changing its policy towards Israel, even after US weapons were used in an attack that killed dozens of people in the city of Rafa in the south of the Gaza Strip. Kate Fisher has more details. The White House said it doesn't believe that Israel's actions amount to, quote, a major ground operation, which is what would cross a red line for President Biden but that the U.S. would be watching closely for the Israeli military to provide answers after a quick and thorough investigation. U.S. media is reporting that its analysis shows that U.S.-made weapons were used in the attack, which is likely to increase the pressure on the Biden administration to pull back its military support to Israel. On Friday, the U.S. Congress formally invited Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to address a joint meeting of lawmakers. OK, let's... Go back over a little bit of that. because There was a lot in there. Okay. Um, first of all, if you notice, it said that they released some hostages. Yeah, a number. No. It's, it's, oh, yeah. you need this. Any and all, uh, this has to stop. Everything, this has to stop. All the people need to move back and we'll release a number of hostages. Right. Not now, all of them. I mean, that's Not the whole thing. Yeah. These idiots, they don't realize that if they just release all the hostages, sausages, <laughs> the um, they would stop bombing them. Right. That's all exactly. they have to do. All Even if they're dead. White That's flag. the thing. Even if they did kill yeah. them, just r- release them and say, hey, give them back. Israel yeah. would stop bombing them. And they just yeah. don't get it. It's, no. People are retarded. Well, they don't, they don't get it because they don't want to get it. They have right. no intention of ever stopping. Ever stopping um right they I, can't because they need israel to be the bad guy right so they they hold on to him so you know they're poking the bear and then when the bear strikes him oh look he's attacking me right this is what exactly. they do yeah so you know i i don't get it i don't understand why the world is so um set on israel being the only one that can take a blow and not and not respond to it um and if they're really all that much into, you know, civilians being killed, how come we don't see all of this, this kind of stuff going on uh, at The Hague, the, you know, mm-hmm. the criminal, uh, International Criminal Court in regard to the Ukraine or Russia or uh, South Africa? Or, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, it, it, it's everywhere, right? But the only one that the only one that's taken any blows here is Israel, and they're the ones that got attacked for no reason whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Don't get yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, all over Africa, you see the Muslims attacking all the Christian villages everywhere, right. and killing people. And they no, why aren't they over there telling them to stop? Why aren't we going in and sending people in to say you need to stop this and and taking their weapons and such? Because it's all it's all the narrative that they need uh, to. You know, to, to get people on their side and cry, mm-hmm. oh, God, oh. Mm-hmm. And, and right. um, you know, I got to tell you this. If you out there, people, are on the side of Palestine, you got a big problem. Big you problem. need to wake up, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. saying Israel's perfect. Never said that, okay? But you need to wake up and yeah. evaluate what you're doing. And if you think that the Palestinians 
or in some way um, rightfully on land or that they are being occupied, then you need to read a history book. Mm. You, I mean, you can start with the Bible. The Bible is your best history book, and it will demonstrate clearly that God gave the land of Israel to the Jews as far back as the first book of the Bible in Genesis. What you are not going to find, including in the Quran, is any mention of Jerusalem in that book. In other words, they just made it up. We, we deserve to be here because we say we deserve to be here, even though we don't deserve to be here. Now, I mean, now that argument is pretty stupid, but that is the world's argument, is it not? It is. And I, I would say this, too. Um, we all know, anyone who's uh, intelligent knows that Hamas is not even wanted by any of their Muslim countries surrounding right. them. Nobody exactly. wants them. Right. They are specifically using them as little pawns. Okay, the pawns are disposable. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Well, use these as pawns to build up this narrative, but they don't even want them. Mm -hmm. So what does that make you? If you are on the side of the pawns, okay, mm -hmm. how much more are they manipulating you? That, yeah. That's really what you got to think of. You think you're so smart? You think you're all this? You are being used and manipulated, right. all right, as a pawn in this whole narrative. So you're not that bright. So well, figure now, it out. Let, Wake up. Let me ask you this, David. Isn't it kind of the way that evil works? Yes. Uh, to begin by indoctrinating the children. Mm-hmm. I mean, you had the Hitler youth. They were indoctrinated. Strict, I mean, you know, they got no other information. If you only get one side of something, that's going to be how you perceive things. So, yeah, they oh, were, yay, they're wonderful. And that's all you ever hear. You're going to think they're wonderful. Right. And, and on the other side of that, if you only hear that the Jews are awful, the, the Jews are the problem on everything. I mean, every single issue, you pick an issue, the Jews are to blame for it, as far as the world is concerned. If that's what's pumped into a child's mind from the day they're born, then how do you think they're going to perceive Jews? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And aren't mm -hmm. we seeing exactly that? And aren't we seeing exactly that beginning to happen in the United States of America, which I believe is now becoming the United Socialist States of America? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he does say, you know, the road is narrow, okay, mm -hmm. and it'll separate the wheat from the tares. So even. Even um, those who would claim to be Christian, um, they're following all this nonsense, including all the other, you know, false narratives we have today with the, the alphabet soup people and the, um, you know, the Islam and all that, which is ironic in itself. But we're, we're seeing the separation now. And that's what happens at the, when the wheat and the tares grow up together, they look the same. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But what happens is, when wheat is about to be ripe, it'll bow down and produce fruit. Okay? And this is what's happening with the church, and then the tares will have their heads up. And then you'll be able to see what the tares are, so you can go through and pull out all these weeds. Whereas before, you couldn't tell which one was a weed and which one was wheat. You know, which one was a tear, which one was wheat. Now, we're getting near the harvest time. You can clearly see which ones are different. That's why Jesus has that parable. You know, wait until the harvest and then, mm -hmm. then pull them out first. Okay. So he's going to go through and pull out all these weirdos and then and burn them up. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to gather the wheat at the end. So it's, it's interesting that here we are at harvest time. Yeah. And should we expect anything less? No, not in my opinion. Um, now, I was going to hold this one off until the second half, but you kind of mentioned it, so I'm going to go ahead and, right. and, and throw it in right now. This is the Pope. Okay, now, I, I, I'm going to say I have no idea what the man said. Supposedly, <laughs> uh, uh, he, he made some kind of comment in a, um, in a private meeting, I believe. It, it's in the report, so y'all will hear this in a second. But um, he made some type of a comment which was um, perceived as being homophobic. So he went out of his way to apologize to this. Now, I want y'all to listen to this one and tell me what you think. 
The Pope has made his first public appearance since apologising for using homophobic language. The Vatican issued the rare apology after reports that the Pope used an offensive term for gay people when discussing his opposition to gay men becoming priests. Here's Charles Gibson in Rome. The Pope smiled and waved as he greeted crowds in St Peter's Square in the Vatican for his weekly general audience. But behind the scenes, the Vatican has been in damage control mode. On Tuesday, after international outcry over his comments in a private meeting, the Pope apologised via his spokesperson, saying he never intended to offend or express himself in homophobic terms. New Ways Ministry, which is a group that represents LGBTQ Catholics, welcomed the apology but also called on Francis to clarify his views on banning gay men from the priesthood. Giles Gibson, Rome. Okay, uh, what are your thoughts on that, David? I mean, I don't know a heck of a lot about the Catholic Church, even though I mm. almost joined it at one point. But that was, honestly, and I've said this before, the only reason that I will consider the Catholic Church is because it had these loopholes in it, which would allow you to continue to do things that other churches <laughs> didn't like. Okay, that, that yep. was it. And, and I realized it yeah. I realized it, it was wrong before I, first, before I actually became a Catholic, never turned back, and I'm happy, thrilled that I didn't make that huge mistake. But what, what do, you, do you think of, of that report? Uh, he doesn't, the you know, report? Well, yeah. let, let me preface this with, I, I know a lot of Catholic people who aren't that way, uh, mm -hmm. and I just pray that, that you know, their eyes will be opened, you yeah. know, because I know a lot that, that are you know, truly saved and they love the Lord, but the Catholic Church itself is kind of whacked out. But more is, um, I'm curious as to what those phrases were. Did he say, Me like, uh, fruitcake? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's light in the loafers. Uh -huh. <laughs> he's a little, a little too clean and neat for me. Uh -huh, I mean, yeah. what did he say that was so offensive? Yeah. I mean, we, we can think of a million things. Um, the word fag is actually for a cigarette, you know? And uh -huh, the word uh -huh. gay means happy. Yes. So but they're just stealing all the words, like they're trying to steal a rainbow. So. Yeah. Right. I, I don't know what what could he say that was so offensive and why they get their panties in a bunch all the time. You know, uh, why stop worrying about being offensive. You offend Christians all the time. Right. Right. And then, and then think you have a right to do it. You don't see me crying about it. No. You know, I just know that, you know, I'm going to pray for you because you're on your way to the lake of fire. It's not going right. to be pretty. Right. <clears throat> well, you know, I, so, I heard him mention LGBTQ plus Catholic. Well, the or two are not BLT sandwiches or something. I don't know. The that isn't even. Uh, I don't even know how to say this, but um, God does not approve. I mean, I know that's not a popular position or anything. It doesn't matter if it's popular, but it's what um, God said. That's what God said. You know, so you yeah. can you can go along with with man's law, or you can go with God's law. And let me tell you, man's law is going to lead you straight to the gates of hell. God's law is going to take you straight to the gates of heaven. So, you know, to me, it's an easy choice. But what, what's your opinion on all this, David? Well, I mean, you, you have to look at this from a different perspective. They're all that. Oh, you're it's the same thing from the beginning. Oh, I just want to be I want to be God and make my own decisions. Mm. God tells us these things and says, don't do that because mm. it's bad for you. Right. All right. Just like your mom and dad. Don't run in the street. Well, I don't have to listen to you. You're you're a streetophobe, Boom. and so since you're a streetophobe, I'm going to run in the street. Well, you're going to get hit by a bus, right? Okay, and it's real simple. He's telling you not to be homosexual because it is detrimental. It is not the design that he has. Okay, I don't care if you like that or not. He didn't make you that way. You weren't created that way. You weren't born that way. Right. He made male and female, and created Jewish. he him. Okay, yeah. so it's detrimental, and that's why he is telling you it will kill you. Right, it will lead you to eternal damnation mm -hmm. because it's an abomination. It's not the way he designed it. Amen. So here, these people are. They think they're all sorts of smart. Tell them the guy who created everything that he's wrong. Right, you've been here a couple of years, and <laughs> all of a sudden, you know how all the creation works. Right. Right. You're not that bright. He's no. telling you because he loves you, yeah. not because he's just mad and wants to beat you up. He loves you and he says, This is an abomination. Don't do it because it will lead to eternal death. Amen. Simple. Yeah. Every 
action has an equal and opposite reaction. <clears throat> and I don't know, David, I, 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 I pray for people, including family members, that, mm-hmm. uh, that they will make the, the right choice at some time and, and accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But those of you who have not done so yet, and you are beginning to wake up to the realities of things, all you got to do is go to the Lord. I don't care what you've done in the past. I really don't. Mm-hmm. It does not matter, not one iota for anyone, and I mean anyone. If you mm-hmm. would like to be saved, you can be. All you got to do is go to God and say, look, Lord, I know I'm a sinner, and I ask you for your forgiveness. I know Jesus Christ died for me on the cross. I know he spent three he days in the tomb. Yeah. I know he rose again on the third day. I know he sits at your right hand, but before he went up there, he promised us he's coming back for his church, every Christian living and dead at a moment called the rapture of the church. And that moment is approaching, and I know that. And I promise I will follow you all the rest of the days of my life. Please save me, Lord, in Jesus' name. And if you'll do that, put it in your own words. You don't have to worry about the upcoming tribulation, which is the worst time the earth will, has ever seen. Just imagine every tornado, every earthquake, mountains falling, stars coming out of the sky, uh, mm-hmm. fire. And every evil thing man can think to do to you. Zero police to help you. Imagine everything in the world going bad at the same time, everywhere, all over the entire earth. Okay, imagine that, because that's what you're looking forward to if you haven't been saved and you haven't been raptured. Am I correct, David? Yeah, and that's that's why we tell you these things. Everyone says, oh, you're just mad. You're a homophobe. And I'm not scared of any homos. Sorry, right. not that. No, that's not the issue. We're not mad at you. We're not saying anything. We don't hate you. Right. We're telling you loudly because we do love you and we want you to be saved and mm-hmm. not go down that path of abomination. I mean, it's it's just real simple. It, mm-hmm. It's time to wake up. Jesus is coming back soon, and you better be ready. And even if it's a little further than we think, you may go home tomorrow. I've mm-hmm. lost several friends. All of a sudden, they're gone. Yes. Where'd they go? Yes. You might be too. I might yeah. be too. Mm-hmm. So we really encourage you, you know, seek the Lord while you have time, because there will be that last breath that you take, right. and the very next breath you take will be in eternity and there is no turning back from that breath i would encourage you take that last breath with jesus christ and the decision for that is now see you in the second half amen from feature story news in washington i'm benji hire with a roundup of the biggest headlines this past week this is a scam this is a rig trial history Donald Trump becomes the first former or serving U.S. president to be criminally convicted. On Thursday, he was found guilty of attempting to influence the 2016 election by falsifying business records to cover up payments to a porn star in return for her silence about an affair. Mitch McCann was outside the courthouse in New York. It took the Manhattan jury just over 11 hours to find the former president of the United States guilty on the 34 charges he faced. Trump left the courtroom and rallied against the judge and the entire court process, calling it a disgrace and a rigged trial with a corrupt and conflicted judge. Current President Joe Biden condemned Donald Trump's attempt to paint his trial as rigged, calling those efforts reckless, dangerous and irresponsible. He says the conviction reaffirms the American principle that no one is above the law. Our justice system has endured for nearly 250 years, and we should never allow anyone to tear it down. That's America. That's who we are. And that's who we'll always be, God willing. The two men are set to face off again at the ballot box in November. Trump, now a felon, can still constitutionally run for the Oval Office, even from behind bars. The judge has set July 11th as the date of sentencing, just days before the Republican Party officially chooses him as its nominee. Donald Trump is expected to appeal the verdict. He faces three other criminal trials, pleading not guilty to all charges. Meanwhile, President Biden says Israel has offered Hamas a roadmap proposal for a ceasefire in Gaza and the reconstruction of the war-torn Palestinian territory. On Friday, he outlined a three-part plan, as Nick Harper explains. A durable end of the war. That's been the focus, a durable end of this war. 
U.S. President Joe Biden says mediators in Qatar have presented Israel's comprehensive proposal to Hamas. Phase one, made up of a number of conditions, would take place over six weeks. A full and complete ceasefire, withdrawal of Israeli forces from all populated areas of Gaza, release of a number of hostages, including women, Palestinians, civilians would return to their homes. Then phase two, a permanent end to fighting between Israel and Hamas. And three, a major reconstruction plan for Gaza. Biden made a direct plea to Israelis who, he says, want to keep fighting for years, instead urging them to take a step back. It's time for this war to end, for the day after to begin. On Thursday, Hamas told negotiators they are prepared to reach an agreement if Israel stops its assault. And that was your Week in Review. And welcome back, everybody, to the second half of Last Christian. Again, my name is J.D. Williams, and joining me there is Mr. David Paxton. Now, David, we covered a bunch of stuff there in the first half of the show, and I want to mm-hmm. again say very clearly I am a member of the U.S. Press Association, so if, if somebody got upset by something that I said, I'm sorry. Uh, but I'm not. What, what we report is factual information, and I, I, I can't help it if the mainstream media is too stupid to pick up on facts, and they want to just have a bunch of people lying to you in every one of their shows. And by that, and I'm going to say this as a member of the U.S. Press Association representing KRRB, that MSNBC is nothing but a clown show. They're fake. They're anti-Semitic. They are teaching you everything that was going to send you to hell. Okay, I'm just going to be real blunt about it right there. Okay, so that's out of the way. You want to make a comment on that, David? Um, oh, about the news media? I remember yeah. when they first started, they were halfway decent. But yeah. I think they did that just to you know draw people in and get them mm-hmm. into the habit of watching them. Um, but then clearly over the years, it bought out by uh, Soros. And here we are. Again, getting close to the end of the age. So it's the frog in the boiling water, right? Mm -hmm. Little by little, they turn it up. Yeah. Yeah, As a matter of fact, I've got a, um, actually do a, a, an ad, uh, that I run for the, um, the ad council and it, it talks about veterans. Okay. And what this is, is for their mental health. It said, Mm -hmm. you know, if, uh, if you put a, if you throw a frog in boiling water, it'll jump right out. But Mm -hmm. if you put a frog in cold water and slowly heat it up, it'll boil. Mm -hmm. And that is that I think that's a good explanation of what's been going on in the United States of America for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And I I think we're going down the wrong road and I think we're going down the wrong road very, very quickly. I want to play this report for you, uh, David. This is, um, in my opinion, the world moving closer to past. Let's listen to this one right here. French President Emmanuel Macron and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz said Ukraine should be allowed to use Western-supplied weapons to strike military targets inside Russian territory responsible for launching missiles at Ukraine. Megumi Lim reports from Kyiv. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has been stepping up his calls to Ukraine's Western partners to lift a ban restricting Kyiv from using Western-supplied weapons to strike inside Russian territory. These calls became more urgent after Russian troops were able to launch a ground incursion into Ukraine's northeast Kharkiv region about two weeks ago and also carry out devastating attacks against civilian areas in the city of Kharkiv over the past week. Both France and Germany's leaders said on Tuesday Ukraine should be allowed to hit military sites inside Russia, from which missiles are fired at Ukraine but specified that no other targets should be struck. Amid these calls, Russian President Vladimir Putin has warned that NATO members in Europe were playing with fire by proposing the lifting of the ban, which he said could trigger a global conflict. Megumi Lim in Kyiv. So we don't want Israel to defend itself, and it can't, it can't do anything, but it's okay if we use NATO forces against Russia in regard to Russia and the Ukraine, when we have mm-hmm. no real interest in in that, um, other than we just want to see Russia beat. Am, am, am I getting this right? We're close to it. Yeah. Here, here's a scenario for you, and um, you know, maybe uh, that 
they're playing the bad guy. You know, mm -hmm. so it's good cop, bad cop. And here right. we go, United States, Russia. They need they need some kind of distraction away from their money laundering, right? Mm -hmm. So and so now we have an added benefit with this too. So we got all this money laundering because we're sending gazillions of dollars. We you know, we're trillions of dollars in debt, but somehow we found this money, all this tax mm -hmm. money to send over to Ukraine, uh, and no one knows where it's going. Right. You know, so they're laundering it over there. You know, so many of the senators have sons who are on the boards of many Ukrainian power companies. Uh, mm -hmm. How serendipitous, wouldn't you, mm -hmm. wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. um, in, including the, the clown in chief. All right. His, his son's over there on the board smoking crack. Mm -hmm. um, so and I say that out of my free speech. So there. Amen. So Amen. Um, here we are. We're, if that was the top story, how many Americans will be saying, why do you keep sending money over there? Why do you keep sending money over there? Why do you keep sending money over there? So here's a solution that solves both the problems. We want to be able to destroy in Israel, okay, in, in many different ways, right? And then they, now, Russia doesn't look so bad when they go and attack Israel. No one cares, right? Mm-hmm. So they set up that narrative and they're hiding their money laundering, okay, over there. And they got pawns that are willing to do that. So here are the pawns, just like the Arab world is using, you know, Hamas for pawns. Now everyone else is saying, hey, they're good pawns. Let's do this. So Hamas thinks they're getting a pat on the back when they're really not. They're just being used. Right. And we're hiding all this stuff. You know, it's a distraction over here in Israel. Get all these idiots to get on the side of Palestine and then they're not worried about all the money we're actually sending to Ukraine. And, and then Russia gets an added benefit. So I think it's, they're kind of all working together. You know, war makes strange bedfellows, as they say. Well, I just know that we're moving closer and closer to World War III. Yep. Every, every it was all written agenda. in the Bible, all of that. Yeah, so. it, 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 is, it is on the agenda and I don't think there's any doubt about it. And I think that there's a lot of people that are wanting it, really. And um, to give you a little bit more on that, let's listen to this one. Ukraine can now strike targets in Russia using U.S.-provided arms after President Joe Biden gave his go-ahead, a marked policy shift that comes at a critical time in the conflict. Administration officials say the authorization is granted but limited to the area of Kharkiv in the northeast of the country, the scene of intense fighting amid a Russian advance across the border. The decision sees the United States follow the stance taken by some European allies that Ukraine should have the right to attack within Russia with Western weapons. President Vladimir Putin of Russia warns the move could trigger a wider war. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, you better listen yep. to Putin because he's serious. I mean, Joe Biden, yeah, he, it, it, Joe, Joe Biden, um, you know, I got these, um, you know, I, I work with this a lot, these dry rice boards, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, little, the little markers here that, you know, dry rice. Yeah, don't, that, don't eat those. Yeah, that's his red line. That's Biden's red line. Yeah, okay? erasable um, marker. <laughs> yeah, but um, Putin, he, he draws his red line in uh, – Markers. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and yeah, you better, you better be careful. Yeah, he may. He believes and will actually do what he says. Joe Biden sticks his finger up and sees which way the wind's blowing, and then he makes a decision based on that. That's my yeah. Opinion. And then Obama tells him what to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. Again, we report that. Okay, I'm a member of the U.S. Press Association, so just look at how things are going and tell me who's right. Is it the lamestream media or is it us? And if you look back at our track record over the last three years, and I think that you're going to find out we're right and they've been wrong. And I'm not looking forward to what's coming next because I still believe, David, that we're going to finally just stamp it, that we have changed teams, we're abandoning Israel, and that the United States is going to join the world in condemning Israel altogether. I really think it's coming. What do you think? Well, here's the interesting thing. Um, as Wolf, you know, John Wolf, Wolf always said, <laughs> can't say his name. Uh, anyway, the um, he says, when you see the Christmas decorations go up, you know Thanksgiving's around the corner. Mm -hmm. And 
he was speaking about the rapture. He says, when you see all of these things that are prophesied to happen uh, in or just before the tribulation period, then you know the rapture is before that. So you, we need to look up. Mm -hmm. And here we see this, this is the imminent abandonment of Israel by all the nations of the world, which mm -hmm. will culminate in the tribulation period. Okay. And then it's got to happen where there's something that brings the entire world together. Okay. And that happens to be the, this one guy, one guy who could talk to everybody, the one world leader, and he's going to be such a good peacemaker. This is great. Oh, I'm going to do this. And he gets everybody together and said, let's all just serve one God. You know, and let's all make it great. And he's he's going to enact an agreement. And somehow he's going to say, okay, everybody, let's just be friends and allow Israel for seven years to be there. Okay? And that's going to be the ruse. If you read your Bible, this is, this is the ruse. But it can't happen until there's something that unites everybody in the world that's left. And the only thing that could do that is like Reagan always said, the whole world will come together if we get attacked from aliens, right? Mm -hmm. So they're going to say, hey, some aliens came and stole all our people. Uh, we all need to get together. Some of them are going to know what's mm -hmm. up. Some of them are going to know that it was the rapture. And they're going to say, you know what? I'm out. I'm going to receive the Lord now. There'll be tri mm -hmm. tribulation saints. Mm -hmm. But the rest of the world, they're clueless, you know, and they're, and they're taking these shots that mess with their minds. They're being controlled by 5G, all this stuff. And they're just going to go with the narrative. And they're all going to get together and be one big happy family under this guy who thinks he's the Christ. Hey, he's the Savior. He's the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Even Israel mm -hmm. thinks he's the Messiah. Yeah. He's not. He's the pseudo-Messiah or the Antichrist. Right. And mm -hmm. then that is, is, is around, it's look literally around the corner. So how much closer is the rapture? So that's what I see. Yeah, no, I agree with you 100%. Uh, a ride, uh, Rajaran, I can't ever say his name. He's the uh, president of Turkey. And uh, he came out this week and stated that all Arabian countries had got, they've got to come together and take a stance against Israel. Uh, now, that's not getting a lot of world play, but I guarantee you, if you go and you Google it or Bing it like I do, uh, you'll, you'll find it. You'll, you'll find those yeah. reports. You know, I'm, I'm not going to report something that, that's inaccurate. And uh, you know, if all the Arabian countries come together against Israel, well, that's a good that's a good sign that things are getting close to getting really really serious. And uh, it doesn't look oh, like I'm Joe excited. B He's just around the yeah. corner. Oh yeah, I'm excited too. You know, unfortunately, there's a lot of people that aren't. Now, here's another mm -hmm. thing: is that we have a very illiterate country, an ignorant country at this point. And um, I, I watch uh, certain shows on uh, one of the news networks and uh, somebody went out and they, they were asking people, well, um, who did the United States fight in the revolutionary war? You would have been surprised. We fought mm. Russia. We fought China. We fought um, everybody uh, except England. Okay, that wasn't mentioned. Uh, who did we, who, um, who did we fight in world war two? Russia. No, we didn't fight Russia. Russia was actually an ally in World War II. Uh, I think there was one person that got the answer right, which was, of course, yeah, Germany. It's ridiculous. Yeah, Germany and Italy and Japan, the axis of evil. So, you know, in other words, what they are teaching your kids in school right now is complete nonsense because all they do is teach them to take a test. That's it. They're not teaching education. Uh, uh, what they and doing. gender equality. Yeah, and they are indoctrinating your children without your knowledge, and mm -hmm. it is incredible. But we are we are now raising a generation of absolute fools, in my opinion, David. Yeah, a hundred percent. And you again, we see the separation. Most of the world will be going downhill. What you do see in the midst of all this, there are those parents and those even children, because my parents didn't do this for me, but I stepped out. I'm like, this is retarded. Mm -hmm. You know, even even I started going to college. I was like, I, I couldn't believe it. I knew mm -hmm. so much more than these college professors. 
and I would challenge him on everything. Oh, you said this and you said this. I went to school for, for engineering. I was like, that's not what this says. Look, mm -hmm. here's some physics and blah, 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 all this other stuff. And they're like, oh, I didn't know that. It's like, well, why am I paying you? <laughs> right. You know? <laughs> you know, come on. This is why. So I can get a piece of paper that says mm -hmm. I came to your class and gave you money? No. So I just went. Yeah, it's just the same thing. But there are those, the remnant that will jump out and say, you know what? I love the Lord and I'm going to work for him. And those are going to be the few. And those we'll see going into rapture with us. Yay. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, speaking of the rapture, and of course, that's really what this show is all about, is trying to find that last individual to accept Jesus Christ before the rapture of the church. I can tell you that time's running out. I mean, it's, it's becoming more and more clear every day that we are getting very, very close to the end. And I wouldn't count on there being a tomorrow. Again, I, every time I say something like that, people say, oh, you're calling your shot. No, I'm not. Not at all. It, you know, it may be months, no, years down the line. Hmm. I'm just telling you that it's very possible that it could be today, it could be tomorrow, you know. Um, it could be Even before from a practical sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. When, when Paul was writing his epistles, they all thought it could be even back then. Amen. Okay. So, yeah, it can be at any time, and God has that on purpose. But, I mean, now it's been after 2,000 years, you know, and he said, after two days I shall return. And now the prophecies from Daniel chapter 9 are falling into place. Yes. The prophecy of the 1,000 years as one day is falling into place. Amen. So now it's a, a, a um, conflagration. You know, it's all of the signs coming together will really get me excited because that's when they all start to corroborate that's when the end is and yeah. and here we are we're we're seeing that and it's exponential it's increasing every single day yeah, absolutely um now david we still got a little a little less than half the show left but oh, i want to I, I want to get away from the news for a minute and All right and try to bring people closer to the lord and i want to start it with a prayer that people will Listen to what you have to say, and and we're going to go from there. But um, Father, we come to you right now, and we ask, please, in your name, that we reach that one individual that needs your salvation. That they will listen to the words of Mister Paxton carefully, and see for themselves how badly that they need the Lord in their life in order to receive salvation. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, David, Amen. I want you to tell people about the Bible study. Number one, we have a show midweek, which is a verse-by-verse -verse comprehensive Bible study that David does. But he also has another Bible study that is, that is even, I don't want to say it's better, it's different in that no, it's, no, no, it's, it, it's, it's, it's an interactive it's, one. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's joined by a number of people, and you can be one of those people. Okay, so anyway, David, I want to just, you go wherever you want to with it. You're midweek or you're comprehensive, either way. I'm I want to go back. to the New Jerusalem. All right. So, um, okay, so we do have that, and uh, it's called the a discipleship study. Okay, and that's what we're doing. So when we do it on the show, we're going to go verse by verse and we'll talk about it. And that goes out, you know, all, all around the world. But we do have a number of people who basically are just not getting fed in churches. And mm -hmm. that's, that's sad, too, because it, it's kind of the theme of this. Why wasn't I taught this in church? Mm -hmm. And so we really dig deep into it. And it's not just me pontificating. Like, it, it's easy to do that here because there's no one on the other side that's going to talk to us jd right. it's just mm -hmm. it's it's me and you right uh kind of tag team in it but on the study everybody's in there and everybody's um not only invited to make comments but encouraged mm -hmm. to say hey what are your thoughts on this what are your thoughts on that mm -hmm. uh this past week we talked about our inheritance in, in christ and we we talked about a number of things the next one coming up is going to be on darkness as an entity so it's, it's these cool things that you're not really taught and that the, the churches are afraid to talk about. Yeah. They don't want to talk about these things because it causes controversy. You mm -hmm. talk about, um, 
you know, the, the rapture and, oh, we don't know which one it is. You talk about yeah. the giants, they have no clue what's going on, so they right. don't even bring it up. Mm -hmm. uh, so things like that, the, the giants in Genesis chapter 6 are pivotal in understanding the entire Bible. Amen. From why did he, you know, God say kill the entire nation, in, mm -hmm. including all the animals? Right. Why did he say stuff like that? Well, because they were all Nephilim. Right. Right. <laughs> and he didn't want that to, to go forward. It would corrupt the, the gene pool again to, you know, um, just, just thing after thing after thing after thing we bring up. Mm -hmm. So it's fun because we'll get on Zoom and you can, you can jump in and um you know give your comments and stuff uh you can go to the hidden day.com and you'll find my email and a link to uh the study as well mm -hmm. so we can go on that now we we did bring it it's on thursday nights now it's gonna be i know our show airs on thursday nights uh, but the the live zoom call will be thursday nights at 8 p.m eastern mm -hmm. because i'm in new york so it's eastern time and you can jump on the zoom the hidden day.com or you can just email me, the hidden day at protonmail.com, where you can get uh, links or, or just jump in there. And, um, you know, you could feel it's a safe environment. So if anyone wants to get in there, um, if you get in there and start causing trouble because, you know, you just want to argue about everything, we could, you know, it's called opt a boot. out. For yes. you. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's called boot now. That's yeah. why we're there. Yeah. Start trouble and do all that. We're there to discuss it as mature Christians and say, hey, what does the Lord have to say about this? And you, you said as mature Christians, but I would also say if you are not a Christian yet, you are more than welcome to join. The thing is, is that, you know, we don't want somebody on there that says, oh, well, you know, your God's fake or, um, you know, all this yeah, don't, crap. Just don't call you know, trouble. You're, you're, you're going to get booted for that. Okay. But if you just get on and listen, whether or not you want to contribute or not, that's up to you. But if just get on and listen and try to get educated on different things. You're more than welcome. And you're also more than welcome to ask legitimate questions. Yeah, I so do I'll be it on all there the live. Time. You can just ask me a question directly. Yeah, you know, I do that all the time in our midweek show. I ask questions that I feel like people uh, might want an answer to sometimes i already know the answer but i know others don't sometimes i ask legitimate questions i've just never been confronted with it before or david will bring up a point that i've never um considered before so both of these are very good shows now okay like david said that thursday evening show it runs in, in about 30 minutes of our show okay and that's that's okay because you can go to www.lastchristian.net and find our show later. So go ahead and get on the, the live show and then find me later. Find us later, I should say. You mm -hmm. know, and that way you're going to get the best of the bo of both worlds. Yeah, you, you, and you know, they're all on YouTube anyway. You can go back and watch previous shows. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, uh, feel free. Don't, don't think that you're going to make me mad because you listen to David's show. Because uh, in all honesty... I'm listening to it too. Okay, so you know, just take that for what it's worth. Uh, David, go, go ahead and give them your uh, addresses one more time. Both, both. Okay, web great. And, and so, uh, thehiddenday.com, and that is that is forwarded to my um, my site on uh, Solo, which has all the information on it. Uh, sometimes your browser may give you a little uh, a little hiccup to go there, but just go ahead and click your way through it. It, it is safe and it's it's solo i'm looking to get that fixed but just in case so the hidden day.com or you could just email me at the hidden day at protonmail.com and we will definitely get back to you it's going to be yeah. fun and exciting absolutely well uh, as i said I've, i haven't been able to get on it the last couple of weeks because of things that are going on here locally and david is aware of that but um i'll be back be yep. back when can. Another thing I want to talk about is <clears throat> a lot of people have been asking how they can uh, support us. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, you know, we're, we're not the ones to ask for money, but on the other hand, there's the Bible that says the, um, you know, worker in the kingdom is actually worth double honor. And the word honor for the King James is pay. Mm -hmm. So we will accept support from people. We're not actively, you know, we're, we're not, 
the little televangelists that are out there saying, <laughs> hey, send this in, this in, and then they call you every week with this new yeah. book, and it's only $1,100. Right. You know? And if you send that in, God's going to bless you. You know, No, we don't play that game, mm-hmm. all right? We do accept support. We accept it gratefully because that's what God commands. It also, you know, once we get to a point, it will allow us to do this on a full-time basis Amen. and bring more of the word and be more focused. Amen. So that that will help too. So uh, not that we're asking for it. If you don't have any money, you can listen to everything anyway. Right. And, but if you do and you'd like to support us, you know, you can actually, there's a link on uh, thehiddenday.com. Just say, hey, this is for last Christian radio show. Uh, you can support over there or uh, you can just, uh, again, email me and, and ask for how to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, just putting it out there because a lot of people have been asking us. Yeah, God bless. And, uh, you know, we don't ask for money. Uh, now, uh, I am going to be updating the sites because we are now a 501c3 uh, uh, nonprofit organization. So. I am going to be putting a link on uh, on Last Christian and also on the radio station, our, our flagship station, uh, KRRB Revelation Radio. But um, it's nothing. It's not something that we're going out there actively saying, "Okay, give, 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 give." We're no, no. It's you know, yeah. if it touches your heart. But there are expenses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, we, everything know, costs money. Like take care yeah. of them. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going, to play, I'm going to play one more clip, and we're going to get out of here okay. real quick. Let's listen to this one. It's important. Iran has bolstered its stockpile of uranium-enriched, close-to-weapons-grade levels, according to a confidential report by the United Nations nuclear watchdog. Tehran seeks to have punitive economic sanctions imposed over its contentious nuclear program rescinded in exchange for curbing the program. The program, like all state matters in Iran, operates under the oversight of Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. Joseph Eckerson reporting. In other words, we are nearing nuclear weapon grade um, processing here. So uh, we're going to ask that you remove all sanctions against us (laughs) <laughs> and then so we, we will continue up. to do what we're doing now, but you'll feel better about the fact that we did it with your support. That's <laughs> basically what they just said, and it's the we're most We're going to do idiotic. it anyway, but we'd like you to say yes. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty stupid. Anyway, I, I wanted to end the show with that, just to let you know that the world is totally upside down. Good is bad. Bad is good. Exactly the way that the Bible said it would be at the end of time. So, if you have not accepted Jesus yet, please do. Just say that very quick prayer in your own words and let the Lord know that you are a sinner, that you're asking for his forgiveness, that you know Jesus Christ is his son, that he died for you on the cross, that he spent those three days in the tomb and he rose again on the third day, just like he said he would, that he sits at the right hand of the Father, he's going to come back for his church, and if you accept Jesus today, you'll join David and I and every other Christian living and dead in the clouds with Jesus Christ on that wonderful day called the rapture. Promise him that you will follow him all the remainder days of your life. Pray that prayer in the name of Jesus Christ from your heart, in your own words, and you will be saved. David, you got, what, 15 seconds? Okay, I just want to say, you know, the uh, Revelation twelve eleven said they overcame the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony and they love not their lives unto the death okay that's really what's going to take it's not about just saying this no mm-hmm. blood of the lamb word of our testimony and give your life to christ even if they threaten you lord willing we'll see you next time you guys have a blessed day Thanks again for joining us today for The Last Christian Radio Show. And be sure to tune in every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday right here and at www.lastchristian.net. Until the trumpet sounds. Put a frog in boiling water and it'll jump right out. But put a frog in cool water and slowly heat it up, that frog will boil. As veterans, we tell ourselves the lie that we can handle anything. We let the water boil. You are not a frog. 
If you or a veteran you know needs support, don't wait. Reach out. Find resources at va.gov slash reach. That's va.gov slash reach. Brought to you by the United States Department of Veterans Affairs and the Ad Council.